Hey guys, my name is Jesse Mew, and welcome back to Finch's Flight. In the last episode, the Feather Colony enjoyed their very first festival. Though unfortunately, that does mean that winter is now upon us. So poor Finch's life in the Highlands is about to get much, much harder. Oh my goodness, though. How beautiful is this place in the winter? Now we can skate across the lake, too. Oh, Claudius, you are going to love this. He did say that he loves to swim in the water, especially when he wants to do a little bit of training. So I bet skating across the lake would work just as well. Maybe to help him keep his balance in those tough battles. Have you considered practicing your hunting skills by pouncing at the snowflakes? No, we haven't. But I mean, we might just do that right now. Claudia seems like just a big goofball to me. You would expect a guard to be really serious, to take their job so seriously like Sarge always did, but he is honestly just one of the sweetest cats. And so is Galen too. I hope that uh, he has plenty of herbs in stock, because we might need his help later in the season. What mystical properties are hiding behind the crystals of the snow? Someday, I will discover a way to utilize the snow for the betterment of my patients. Oh, you know, I think uh, Doc used to say that he would use snow to soothe the wounds of his cats. So I really think that you need to get to know our old healer. I bet that you two would really get along well. We'll go ahead and fill Galen's pockets with the last of our Valerian, because I don't think we're going to need to use that too much in the winter time, so that at least should be a safe gift. And then we're ready to say hello to the newest face of the Feather Colony, Griffin, who might just be one of the most unique cats we've ever met. He's certainly the only cat that I can think of who has absolutely no interest in being our friend. Just in case I haven't been clear, I'd much rather that you stayed away from me, okay? Yeah, we get the picture, Griffin, but honestly, I think you are hiding a big, soft sweetheart under that tough exterior. Maybe we should try the snake lily on him too? He really hated the rabbits we gave him before. He did not seem impressed by them at all. So the snake lily might be a safer choice. Oh, look at that big smile. Oh, for me? That's kind of cool, I guess. Yeah, I can definitely see Griffin spreading the snake lily right around his den as like a deterrent for the other cats, but not for Finch, of course. He would know all of Griffin's sneaky little schemes, so he would know the perfect pathway to take to make sure that he doesn't get poisoned in the process. We'll go ahead and drop off our bunny breakfast for you, Claudius. That's become something of a ritual for Finch. Probably something to take his mind off of how far away he is from his father. And on that same note, I think it might be time for us to head out to our battles today. As scary as that is, these battles are right on our borders, so we have to keep our territory safe. We do have a brand new trick in our back pocket. We purchased the uh, Summon Allies skill the other day. So if the Mountain Domain continues to cut through all of our guards, we should be able to summon some more to help us out again. We'll just have to make sure that we don't have our battles, like, right on the cliff sides, because that always makes it particularly hard for us to see our cats. Let's go ahead and munch on some of our licorice root stew. Maybe one extra, just in case. And then we'll charge in and see how we do. I think we're going to want to search for some more power paws today. You know, because it's pretty clear that we desperately need more power paws to keep ourselves alive. Let's go ahead and summon our allies and then use our lion's roar to make everybody scatter. That way we can get a few extra good hits in. Oh my gosh, Rosemary, I'm sorry. I thought you were an enemy cat. It must have been that bright red fur. It reminds me of the uh, red name that they have over their heads but they have already taken care of our reinforcements too. So now it's just down to you again, Finch. Do you think maybe we should use one of our herbs? I don't want to risk running out. And you know, there's only one cat left, so maybe we can take them. If we're super, super careful, don't let chocolate hit us too much. 
then maybe we can take him out and uh, snatch up his muse before we leave. Oh, more reinforcements. Thank you so much, Slate. Oh my gosh, I wish I could give you just like the biggest gift of catnip right now. My whiskers are going crazy today. Stop twitching already. Oh, that must be your finch senses. Your finch senses were tingling, telling you that he was in trouble. Honestly, we are so lucky that he came in. We only have a few more health points left. Yeah, maybe we want to skip this battle for now. Just until we have some more of our abilities at our disposal. And while we wait, we can scoop up all of our delicious berries and see if maybe we can discover any more secrets in the forest. Now, if I remember correctly, Penny did find one of those totems to talk to in the wintertime somewhere by the prairie, so it should be close by, and if we answer all of its questions correctly, we'll be able to take its power paw to heal Finch up and gain a little bit of extra health too. So let's see if we can figure out where this thing was located. Yeah, I'm trying, there we go. I'm trying my best to remember exactly where Penny found all of her treasures. She didn't exactly leave Finch a map to help him out. So he's going to have to try to dig back deep into his memory, try to conjure up all of those stories that she used to share. So hopefully we're going to be able to answer all of these questions. What is the name of the cat who resides over festivals and weddings? Oh, that's Coco. We know Coco quite well. Which of the following fish do not live in our ocean? Sea bass, catfish, or mackerels? Well, I'm pretty sure it would be catfish because the catfish typically live in lakes, right? That is correct. Yeah, the lakes and the rivers. I've never actually seen a catfish in the game though, aside from the one that we bought from Coco. What does the herb Miracle do if you use it? Increases your colony's power in an area, gives you a speed boost, or heals you? Yeah, it definitely heals you. That's what we're lacking right now, in fact. That is correct. You answer wisely and justly. My treasure belongs to you now. Oh, excellent. So now with this, we should not only gain a little bit of extra vigor as our maximum health increases, but all of our health is going to be restored. So now, you guys better watch out over here. As soon as our skills are ready, we are going to charge in and see if we can chase you out of the highlands. The other power paw that I know we can pick up is over by the walking trail, I believe. And if I remember correctly, that area isn't even taken over by the Mountain Domain right now. They've been spending so much time trying to chip away at the Highlands that they've actually kind of let their guard down by the walking trail, the shady corner, and all of the land surrounding the forest colony. So now might actually be the safest time to try to scoop that up for ourselves. I just hope that we don't run into too many forest cats along the way, because this is also following pretty much in the footsteps of Penny. You know, it might actually be a good idea for us to bring more gifts to the forest colony too. That way, if we get to a high enough reputation, we won't have to worry about their guards at all. We learned that from Penny as well, when she got to know the Mystic Colony, she formed a bit of an alliance with Alyssa that allowed her to walk freely through their land. And if anybody is going to be on Finch's side, I feel like it would have to be the Forest Colony. His old home, the place where he was born, surely Scout and Penny at the very least would be uh, willing to lend him a hand in battle. I wonder if that also means that if we did get into one of those giant wars between multiple colonies, if our allies would help us rather than turn on us in the end. It is definitely something worth investigating, something we'll have to keep tucked in the back of our minds. But now we're at the canyon cliffs, so we're super, super close. We have the graveyard above us, and then directly next to that should be the walking trail that we're looking for. I haven't seen uh, any more little rocks to crack open. Oh jeez, but I did see that forest colony cat. Yeah, they know that we're sniffing around this territory. They know that we're looking for more power paws to use to our advantage. 
If only that was something that Penny could donate to. But Finch is all on his own this time. Oh no, it looks like this place isn't safe after all. We have some more cats coming up to chase Finch away from the walking trail. But maybe we can take them out. It's only two cats so far. We don't have our summon allies ability to help us. But if we play this very, very carefully, we might be able to get out unscathed. Yeah, I just don't want to use too many of our herbs because we have so few in our stores. And I want to save them for emergencies. And despite how quick ice seems to be, this is definitely not an emergency. So let's go ahead and follow the walking trail. And hopefully this will be enough to get us our next power paw. Oh no, do we have more reinforcements coming after us? Well, maybe we can finish our walk anyway. These guys do seem a little bit slow. So as long as they don't catch up to us. Oh boy, it looks like the forest colony is getting in on it too. Go after the mountain domain, okay? We're just trying to gather up power paws here. We're not looking for a fight. There we go, I think I did hear it spawn. And just in time too, because look how many mountain cats are out here. Oh my gosh, grab that power paw and run, Finch. You don't want to be involved in this battle. You definitely don't have enough reinforcements for that. Okay, let's have him warp directly back home. I think that's going to be far, far too long for him to walk, especially straight through enemy territory. Oh, Claudius would probably hate to hear about all of the risks that we just took. But I mean, it was all for good reason. Now we have at least 125 health points to work with, which is certainly better than uh, what we were at before. And we didn't even use any of our herbs. We still have every last one inside our inventory. We even picked up some extra berries to uh, share with you guys too. I wonder if any of our cats would enjoy berries as much as Finch does. Maybe not Claudius, because he really does prefer the bunnies, which probably means that uh, the berries are not to his tastes. But I wonder if somebody like Galen would enjoy munching on the sweet berries too. We even have blueberries in our inventory right now, which would uh, blend in very, very nicely with your lovely fur. So let's see what he thinks of the winter blueberries. Your actions are kind, thank you. Oh cool, it wasn't his favorite. I still feel like he probably enjoys receiving herbs a bit more, but you can understand why. He needs to keep his supplies high as well. Nature adorns itself with beautiful snow. Perhaps that's why we also desire to adorn our homes with beautiful things. Ah, imitating nature in a way. Maybe that was a little hint that he wants some decorations around his den. Well, we'll try our best, Galen. There's really not too much for us to pick up out in the winter time. But if we happen to find anything special for you, we will do just that. And we'll have to go into the swamps again today to see if we can uh, find some more snake lilies for Griffin. You really need to find another cat to befriend because I'm not looking to make new friends. I'm here because there's a nice comfortable den and it's far away from my past life, okay? You got that? We've got it, Griffin, loud and clear. But we're still gonna go looking for some new gifts to bring you. Because I just don't believe that you're as grumpy as you say. The snake lilies are some of the hardiest plants in the entire forest. So they should still be alive and well, even though the snow has already fallen. It does mean that we're going to have to walk straight into enemy territory yet again. So we'll just have to keep an eye to our backs as we wander down closer toward the mystic colony, toward the heart of their camp. If we're going to make this a ritual, we might want to consider getting on their good side too. I guess it all depends how many cats truly seem to enjoy these kinds of gifts. This probably reminds Finch of his sister in a way, because she loved the snake lily so much as well. She wasn't quite as standoffish as Griffin, but she was very, very shy. Maybe that's why he's so invested in getting to know Griffin better. Because deep down, he knows that he probably just needs somebody to keep him company. He's just too shy to say it himself. He tries to keep all of his feelings locked behind that tough mask. It does make me wonder what sorts of things must have gone on in his past. For him to feel like he needs to push away every cat who wants to get to know him. But something tells me if we do befriend him enough, 
he would probably be willing to open up about that secret. Let's go ahead and munch on one of our crows, though. Something a little bit different. Not Finch's favorite snack, but he needs something particularly substantial. You know, I wonder if Griffin might like the crows, too? The dark bird is often seen as another powerful omen, so maybe that would be yet another good way to keep cats away from his den. Setting out crow feathers, snake lilies, basically anything with that powerful message that might send cats running. I would love to see Galen try to interact with Griffin. Can you even imagine? Since uh, Galen is so concerned with making sure that all of the cats are in top spirits, he would probably have a field day with Griffin, or at least it would give him a run for his money, trying to uh, get him to open up about his past, maybe explain why he's so unwilling to get to know the other cats of the forest. It would be pretty fun if we could eavesdrop on uh, conversations between our cats every now and then. I don't think we're going to find any more of the, uh... Wait a second. Oh my gosh. You can just barely see the power paw symbol on that stump. That must mean, yeah, that we can crack it open just like the rocks. How many times have I walked past stumps like that? That was so hard to see. If I wasn't looking for the snake lilies, I probably wouldn't have noticed that at all. But yeah, I don't think we're going to find too many more uh, snake lilies out here. It seems like, despite how hardy they are, they are very, very rare to come across. We did manage to pick up one extra snake lily to share with Griffin. I wish it could be more, but maybe that means that we'll have to uh, try to build one of those gardens sooner rather than later. There we go though. Even though we didn't get the frog, at least it led us to another snake lily. So let's go ahead and warp back home. That way we'll still have time to drop off all of our extra gifts. And we should also be able to test our abilities, of course, in those battles that are brewing on the borders. So first things first. I have some lovely little snake lilies for you, Griffin, since you seem to really enjoy these before. I really hope this will be enough to gain another star with him, so maybe he'll uh, give us a little bit more information about his past. And now off we go once again. Another day, another battle, Claudius. But this time we have plenty more power on our side. Yeah, as long as we keep gathering up these power paws, I think that's going to be the main thing that saves Finch. And uh, the experience points too. We haven't checked this in a while, but unfortunately we're just short of upgrading another one of our skills. So do you guys think that we should focus on foraging? Or should we try to upgrade our fighting ability first? This would allow us to pack more of a punch in all of our attacks but the foraging would make it so we can heal ourselves faster. And it would also gain us uh, more hunger when we use all of those berries and licorice roots too. So it's a bit of a, a tricky decision to make, especially with so many cats out here. Oh my gosh. Let's try our best to take out as many as we can right now. Well, they're still a little bit scared. Unfortunately, we weren't able to do too much damage, but it looks like there's only three cats left. So we'll team up on Jones down in the corner. Oh no, but here come the reinforcements. Always at the worst of times. Where is Slate when you need him? Oh, surely one of our reinforcements are going to come rushing in now too. This is one of the most important battles since it is right on that last tile that we need. Oh, they just keep sending in more cats. Oh no. As soon as we take out a few more, they send in more reinforcements to help them. So yeah, Finch, I think you're going to have to cut your losses for that one too. And that does mean that this battle on the corner is probably also going to go to the Mountain Domain. Maybe we need to focus more on different tiles. And once we do have a bit more strength to our name, once we do have more cats to defend us, that's when we will try to take over the Highland North. I think it's truly because it's next to these locked tiles that so many of their reinforcements are standing in the sidelines, just ready to jump in as soon as their guards start to fall. So I think in the next episode, 
once Claudius is awake again, and once we can talk strategy with him, we'll start figuring out how to push our territory closer to the south since we're already chipping away at the Mystic Colony control, and it's not quite so close to their base of operations. We just need more land to work with, and then it should be much, much easier for us to regain our supplies as soon as uh, all the snow thaws in the spring. But we do have a long way to go. It's only right at the beginning of winter, so cross your fingers for Finch as he continues his journeys in the Highlands. But for now... Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye, guys!